and welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Catherine. I'm a year three teacher in Bedfordshire and this video is all about PowerPoints, how I make them and how I use them. Um, so I did do a video on this a long time ago. This is more like an updated version and this is all about like my weekly PowerPoints that I use, which is this thing, um, not like general PowerPoints. This is just how I organise my week or my day. I found that I started doing this, this, yeah, I started doing some training and then never stopped because it just worked for me. It meant that I had the whole week just in one place to organise my thoughts. If there was something that had to move, I could just move the slides around. I have all my resources linked and everything. It's just like a home hub for me and I rely on them yet less, but I do still very much need them because if I haven't got my PowerPoint, I generally don't know what's coming next. So this is how I make them. Um, in this video, I'll just be going through the resources that I use, exactly how I make them. I'll show you like step by step. And then at the end, I should hopefully have a version that I can just pop on my TS or Dropbox or something. But if anyone wants it, they can have it because it's it's just going to be there. I'm going for a summer type theme to lead us into term five and six. We're almost there. So if you want to know how that is done, keep watching and you can find out. Okay, so like I said, these are my weekly slides. So I use them Monday to Friday for all my lessons. I have got four different slides in here. So I've got like a general morning slide. I've got transition slides. I have got like a lesson starting and then task slides. And I just copy and duplicate those and change the task or the lesson or whatever to fit what I'm doing. But generally it's just those four slides copied and duplicated and moved around to form my whole day. I'll be showing you guys how I make the backgrounds for it and how I make the actual boxes and text, how I arrange it, and then more of how I use it, so how I link my lesson slides, any videos I add in, and the timers that I use. Hopefully I'll remember to link everything in the description, but if I forget anything, please let me know because I know I'm like, I might forget something. But without any more rambling, let's see how I do this. Um, I always make my backgrounds on Canva, which if you have not heard of or used Canva, great website, you can do so much on it, I use it for everything. The first thing you do is go to canva.com and then go to create a design, which is in the top right hand corner, little purple button. I select presentation because it's the right dimensions for PowerPoint. And then from here, I can just get on with designing whatever I want. I always tend to just choose a nice background colour, nothing too fancy. Um, I stick to pastel colours just because if I go too bright, I think it's too distracting for the children, but also for me, I'm all about the pastels. So I'm just going to go ahead and make a background here using the different elements, different fonts, all that stuff that you add on. The important thing to remember here is that you're literally only making your background. You do not need any space for writing or anything like that just because you can do all that stuff when you actually import it into PowerPoint. So I'm literally just making the background and adding shapes and things. I tend to, to stick to a colour scheme, but that's because I'm a perfectionist. Make yours however you like. Okay, so here is the next part. Once you have made the background, you then need to download it. For this, you need to download it as a picture. And that is the important thing here. It has to be a picture. Just go on share in the top right corner, click on download. It'll ask you what you want to save it as. So PNG is the best one. It's a high quality and PNGs are just occasionally transparent, not on Canva though, because that's a pro feature. But for the free use, just download it as a PNG and it will appear in your downloads folder. PNG, the next step is to open a new PowerPoint document. It hasn't got to be anything special, just 
a PowerPoint document and then you're going to want to make it blank. So either go to design and layout at the top or right click on the slide, go down to layout and select blank. Once you've done that, you need to insert your picture. So you're not changing the background, you're just inserting it as a picture. For this, you go to insert, you go to pictures, you go to downloads and double click your design. You might have to resize it to fit, but because the PNG, it should um, enlarge in without ruining the picture. It shouldn't stretch, it should just get bigger. Once you've done that, you can move on to adding all your other design features or whatever you want for your slides. So I'm just going to go ahead now and make the rest. I'm fortunate that I've got my already in use PowerPoints to do. I'm just going to copy and paste the boxes over. Um, but for you, anyone else, experiment. See what you like. Use other shapes. If I had the newer version of PowerPoint, I would change the lines to make them more fun and funky. Just because the new versions have got like the squiggle lines, which... I really love using but this is not the new version of powerpoint so i'm gonna go for regular boxes and i will come back in a moment okay just popping in with another voiceover to say that this part is quite an important step that i did not mention so after you've inserted your picture you will need to put a blank white square over it and then make it somehow transparent so i did 68 percent for this one just because if you add any text and you have any black elements in your background they'll kind of fade in and you won't be able to read the text cor correctly. So I always add a transparent square over the top to kind of dull the colours or separate it and then you can see text. Okay, I'm all done. I've made quite a few variations. I'll pop them up here. I've done everything with text and no text, just in case you want to add your own text. But this is all of them. So I've got the morning slides, kind of transition slides, task slides, some general empty, here are some boxes to put what you want slides. Um, and then I've got like the transition for break time and then um, um, in my class we do a morning meeting so I just threw that one in as well just in case you want to do that too but that's all the only extra thing is for this um break time slide the circles I had to crop them to make them fit otherwise when you add it as a picture background it will put in the whole circle and it will make it smaller to fit so for that I just drew the circle to the size that I wanted it to be I put it in the corner then I saved that as a picture and then I inserted the picture of the circle and then I cropped it because you can't crop shapes, you can only crop pictures. That's an annoying extra step, but it works, so I did it. Okay, so that is the how to make them. Now it's the how I use them. Like I've said, this is my entire week. Like this PowerPoint is my whole week. I do do everything day by day, so all of Monday, lesson by lesson. Sorry, um, and I'm just gonna go through exactly how I use them, including anything I add into them to make them work for me. The slides, so the one that I use every morning when the kids first come in is this morning slide. It has got just a good morning to the class. It's got a little message from me um, and my Bitmoji that I get from using the Google Chrome application. If you download it to Chrome, you can just access all your Bitmoji straight from there and then insert them with anything. Um, I've also got the kids morning mission, so that is just their morning jobs. I want them to do when they come in. Generally it is to do the mental maths so every other day we'll have mental maths on but for Monday it's just a settling in kind of day. Um, underneath that I've got the children who are on duty so that changes every week. So on Monday I let them know who it is they'll be able to spun the wheel on Friday so they'll know just a reminder and then in place of where the mental maths usually goes are their beginning of the week jobs which is things like choosing our shout out our callback and our code word for the week it's to check the timetable to choose the morning check-in and to do the register from next week because independence do more things 
so that goes up every morning and the general setup is just that slide whatever they need for the morning mystery on tables and then some calming music because I need it in the mornings so the slide that comes after that is morning meeting part one this slide has got our check-in and this picture is just from Google I just typed in check-in they're really hard to find I had to type in what Peppa Pig are you because quizzes were quite popular when I was younger and now they're like gone but that's just that I did rearrange it a little bit because it was horizontal in six so I just um used the cropping tool to very awkwardly rearrange it wouldn't recommend um but it's there after that we've got so register um which is with check-in the children tell you their number then we have goal um I just show our goal for the week we discuss how we can do it then we play a game just a quick game like a very quick who's on my keys a very quick um wink murder just something quick to kind of bond us as a class before we get into the next slide is morning meeting part two this is where i just go through our timetable for the week which is in the corner that is just a table that i colored kind of green and white to match the powerpoint the green parts are one of our breaks so break time lunch time home time just so the kids can kind of visually see okay i've got these two lessons then break time then these two then it's lunch time but also so i know i've got these two lessons then it's break time these two then it's lunch time um the next part and the last part of morning meeting is our word of the week this is something that i started very recently it is not my idea it's not my product and i will link the person who did it down below because i can't remember right now but it's a powerpoint that just has a load of words you can choose from to be your weekly word it comes with definitions and also comes with activities that you can do i haven't done any yet purely because lack of time but the way we do it is we just discuss what we think it means then the um, definition comes up then we discuss how we can do that in the week i will add that to a rule i've got in the classroom so the kids know what i'm looking for the week in the uh, what i'm looking for in the week um, any children spotted or nominated for exhibiting that quality or whatever it is and um, they are added onto um, a wheel of names online to spin for our awesome motto at the end of the week so it all kind of feeds into the behaviour system of the class okay, so then we go on to kind of the learning lesson slides this one is just a mass face of slides I have got the table names across the top the names at the bottom are hidden with a white square for GDPR reasons for the video but also so that when I tell children where they're going they have to wait for me to show them and tell them where they're going otherwise they'll see the name and they'll just go without hearing any kind of instruction the only thing on the bottom is that um, the instruction that if they have a one in the table space they are the table captain I am kind of wanting to make table job cards for them because that makes my life easier but for now it's just if I write a one in your space your table captain and that's the child that hands out like this the um oh pencils glue stationery what stuff because otherwise they're all kind of launching for it and it becomes an issue it's literally just like that person is the only person who can touch your table pencil case and nobody else okay so the next slide is my most used slide this is my lesson starting slide i use this for all my lessons whether it's like academic because in the books whether it's non call whatever it is i use these slides just as a signal that our lesson is beginning so i will start from the thin box on the edge into the middle big box so the first thing that we have is the you will need slide i took these images from twinkle and i actually just downloaded a um tray label resource that was editable and then i right click saved all the images as images and i reuse them now the other way you can do this is to either go to flat icon or some other icon website or just google cartoon book cartoon pencil whatever you need underneath that is the uh, we are working slide or you are working and that's either independently in pairs or in a group this image is just from flat icon i couldn't find twinkle one unfortunately would like to match but it's fine and then the last thing is the timer slide so you have these timers are actually videos that i downloaded from youtube using a converter i will tag my most used one at the bottom but if you just type in YouTube to MP4, generally it will come up. I tend to download them in the best quality. Doesn't make much of a difference, but I prefer to. And then I just insert however many t um, minutes I need. So I've got like a three minute, 10 minute, 45 minute, whatever I need it for, it's there. I've also got a range of different ones. So this is the minimalist timer. It's just white. 
I've also got a radial rainbow timer or just some black timers, whatever I think I need to use. So then the bigger section is what the children actually need to know. So at the top, I've got the lesson we are starting and the colour of the word is actually matching to the colour book we're going to need. The kids probably haven't noticed that, but it just makes me happy, so I did it. Um, underneath that is the date and a lie. Again, just a table with blank lines to make sure it all fits together. Um, and then we've got the warm up. The warm up always matches with whatever the children are going to do in the lesson. And that is there for the children who finish the date and a lie before the timer. Generally, the children have three minutes to write date and lie and be on the carpet. And at the end of that three minutes, whether they're finished or not, they need to be on the carpet and they can finish their date and lie when they go to do their main task. Generally, it's to get them to just be quicker with the task of writing dates and a lie, but also we need to start lesson, so they go to the carpet. Um, after I've shown the slide and discussed the warm up, I then get to our lesson slide, which is actually hyperlinked to one of those icons in the you will need section. So to hyperlink something, I just click on the image and then on the top bar of PowerPoint, I'll go to insert and then hyperlink has got like a globe and then a chain icon. From there, I can browse to um, link it to a document on my computer or to a website if that's what you need. But for me, it's just to the um, PowerPoint for our lessons. I like doing this because rather than adding the slides into my own weekly slide and making it a whole thing, I've got to make slides for my lessons anyway as part of my planning policy. But this means that I can open the PowerPoint within my PowerPoint and then when I finish the lesson or when I close out that lesson PowerPoint, it will go right back to my PowerPoint. It doesn't disrupt me in any way. I haven't got to like go through the lesson and then fuss around trying to close this window, open that window. It's just tap, 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 escape to get out of it and then I'm back in my own weekly PowerPoint. So that's my favourite slide to use at the moment. So from my most used to my least used, this is my transition slide. They are in all my PowerPoints, but I seem to never get to them. I just, I, just, I don't know how. I know that something's gone wrong because I never see this, this slide. But these are my transition slides. It just has at the top what lesson it is, or what break we have rather. So break time, lunch time, home time. Um, occasionally we'll have assembly, but anytime we're transitioning from one thing to the next, that'll be there. Um, underneath it's got the to-dos, so it's got what the whole class need to do, and it goes step by step. So things like get your coat, um, collect your book off the floor, and then stand behind your chair. The way that I do transitions in my class is I tell the children I'm going to respectfully throw your book onto the carpet. And I just put them all out and they've got to go do their job, get the book from the carpet and put my table space. Just because it means that at break time I haven't got to go then and go around and hand out books like they're already out. They're there. If they are feeling a bit less switched on, they will open their book and put pens in the middle. Some may start writing their date, but I don't want them to, so I don't do that. Um, underneath that is the on duty job. So the children who are on duty for the week have different jobs to do. They need to, maybe they've got to do everything that everyone else has to do as well, but also make sure the lockers are tidy and line up by the doorway, start the line. Then we have any reminders. So for this reminder, it was that football is unbanned. It was recently banned and that they can play again, but I want to see no injuries, no squabbles. And then underneath that, there's a timer again from YouTube. And that's one of my black timers. I think it's for three minutes. I can't remember now. Okay, that's it. That's the whole video. Um, hopefully I haven't forgotten anything. I don't think I have. I've gone through my mental checklist. I don't think I have. But if I have forgotten anything, please feel free to put it in the description box down below. No. Comment down below or just mess me on Instagram. I'll be more than happy to double check and let you guys know. But that is how I make my PowerPoints and... How I use them they literally save my life every time even now looking at it I feel a lot more confident going into next week and going back to school because I've made this PowerPoint so I know what's coming because I've had to go through the planning to do my warm-ups and things so I know exactly what's gonna happen in each lesson Um, I'm actually gonna go ahead and just edit some bits of my PowerPoint now Um, while I'm keeping the structure of it the same I'm keeping my green I'm gonna switch to some orange Um, I do want to change some things that I do in the afternoon and again this helps me with my routine and settling that sort of thing so like afternoon meeting at the moment is um circle time which we kind of stopped doing last term because it took far too long but I also want to do something while the kids are coming in because it took so long because the kids were like floating and it's like okay get in so um yeah 
I'm gonna think more about that. But I'm gonna end the video here. Thank you for watching. I hope it was useful. If not, don't tell me. If it was, let me know. Um, if I forgot anything, comment or DM me on Instagram. And if I forget the link for this PowerPoint, please let me know. Like, I hope I won't, but please let me know. Anyway, thank you for watching. Bye.